sports, playing sports uh, has directly impacted every aspect of my life. I call it the gift, my gold medal, the gift that keeps on giving. My League Apps colleagues have heard me say that a lot. Um, I've learned all kinds of lessons, and I don't need to preach to the choir here, but I think of every aspect, getting my degree, from my engineering degree from University of Tennessee, meeting my husband. I met from two other uh, athletes when I was at this uh, Olympic Committee uh, meeting. Uh, of course, wouldn't have had my kids if I didn't have my husband. Pretty much every single job I've ever had, uh, I met uh, Jeremy through uh, another organization that we actually started, the Play Sports Coalition, um, so, and hence came to work for League Apps. And so I think that um, in this session, the next session we do, we're going to really take a step back and understand how sports has shaped us, uh, be it the NBA or the NCAA or high school sports, um, how getting that scholarship and setting that personal best record or changing a life and really understanding the opportunity that we all have in youth sports to impact lives every single day. So we're going to look at an impressive national sports training and operations platform that puts athlete development and training and uh, education at the forefront of what they do every day, EL1 sports. So first I'm going to call up Ashley Rowley. She's the general manager of EL1 Loveland. Where are you, Ashley? OK, come on up. Um, she is a former D1 catcher, and she's still in the record books for her work behind the plate. Now she's committed to creating and providing equitable opportunities for girls in sports through various positions of leadership in youth sports, including she's a founder of the C and CEO of the Colorado Softball Academy. She's founder of Futures Fast Pitch and the general manager of Alliance Performance Center. Uh, welcome, Ashley. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we've got Kellen Tate. She's a district manager of Softball University for EL1. Um, she brings 21 years of coaching experience to her role, and as a player, she led Michigan to four appearances in the Women's College World Series and three Big Ten championships. Please welcome Kellen Tate. I'll turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Bonita. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you today uh, and to get to share our story on how sports has impacted us. So in thinking about that question, you know, how does sport shaped who you are today? It's, it's affected all aspects of my life. I am fortunate enough to view sports and experience sports through multiple lenses. One as an athlete, as a parent, and as a, as a coach. So I'm gonna touch briefly on my athletic experience because to be honest, sport continues to shape who I am in a more impactful way as a parent and a coach. So these lovely pictures <clears throat> are my right knee and my left knee. This experience right here, the summer before my freshman year at the University of Florida, I was at a tournament up in Seattle, Washington. I hit a ground ball to third base, frustrated with myself trying to beat it out, right? And I stretched too far for the base, hyperextended my knee, subluxed my kneecap, okay? For those of you not familiar with that, you dislocate it, it goes out and it comes back in on its own, stretches out your tendons and takes out everything in its pathway. I get back to Denver, mom takes me to the ER immediately once she picks me up at DIA. And the ER doc tells me, you have torn your quad from your femur. I said, no, I didn't, done this before. The next day we get into my orthopedic surgeon. He was a family friend because he'd done two ACL reconstructions on my brother, so we kind of had an in. Also happened to be really talented as a team doc for the Denver Nuggets. After he drained 90 cc's of blood out of my knee, he looked at me and said, Ash, I know what to do, but it's gonna require surgery. I'm set to report to the University of Florida in two months, okay? He said, you're gonna have a tibial tubercle osteotomy. Basically, that means they've got to do bone work to get my kneecap to where it will track proper, properly, okay? I wake up from surgery, I'm bruised hip to toe, and I'm sitting in a machine that moves my leg up and down for eight hours a day. I step foot on campus at the University of Florida and my calf is bigger than my quad, okay? Fast forward to the weekend of February 12th. I was released to play and we're playing at UCLA, okay? Small town freshman from Pine Junction, Colorado. I'm behind the plate and I look at the likes of Stacy Newman, who's a fifth year Olympian standing in the box going, oh, this ain't Colorado anymore. She proceeds to then hit a line drive off the tree past right center. Not the point. 
But after that game was over, the UCLA team doc came up to me and he said, young lady, are you the, uh, you the one who had the tibial tubercle osteotomy? I said, yes, sir. And he said, do you know that nobody comes back from that surgery to play, nonetheless, catch? And I said, no, sir. I, I, I didn't know that. I had a lot of great athletic trainers, physical therapists, you know, the things the SID is training to say. But he said, you're the first one to ever come back and play following that operation. Nobody told me that was a career ender, and I'm glad that they didn't. Nobody put that limit in my mind. This was one of the first ex major experiences. While I've won championships, and I've done a lot of cool things, and I've got a lot of cool accolades, if we wanna talk about what has made me successful in life, it's experiences like this. Everything is figure outable if you want it bad enough. Now, these two little ones are mine. Yes, they are as ornery as they look. <laughs> Do me a favor, by show of hands, who has a daughter in the room? Okay, I want you to, I want you to go on a journey with me. Go ahead and close your eyes. I want you to envision a 12-year-old little girl playing on the playground. Maybe this little girl's your daughter. Maybe she's your sister, your niece, or maybe it's you. It's a beautiful fall day, and this little girl's playing on the monkey bars. She's going to the slide and to the swings. And then two boys walk up to her on the playground and say, you're fat, you're ugly, and you should kill yourself. Go ahead and open your eyes. In that moment, how do you want your daughter or that little girl to respond? In the fall of 2019, I decided to get back into teaching lessons. Okay, I made my husband a deal. Once we got out, my kids are 17 months apart. Not on purpose, that's for another conference. <laughs> I made my husband a deal. I said, hey, if you hang a cage in the garage, I will take on eight catchers. I want to expose my daughters to the game that I love so much, that gave me so much. I said, all right. So I start taking on these kids, and every time I meet a new kid, the first thing out of their parents' mouth is she has no confidence. What? I'm seeing a trend. A month later, I get a phone call from my sister-in-law. My niece, who was 12 at the time, lives in Ohio. She said, hey, Ash, I need to give you a heads up. Presley's good friend just died by suicide. Because two boys walked up to her on the playground and said, you're fat and you're ugly and you should kill yourself. It was in that moment as I look at my two little girls trying to sort through the emotions, I figured out that this sport, this game, this opportunity is a platform for me to teach young female athletes the intangibles, the life skills to where they can control the thoughts in their head, to where they can learn to love who is staring back at them in the mirror. The idea for this program started in the fall of 2019. I want to expose my kids to the game that I love, that provided me with so much. When I started this, I noticed a common theme that every kid that I took on, the first thing out of their parents' mouth was she has no confidence. In my role as the director of mental performance, I have the great honor of working with the clinician at the foundation. Part of what the academy is doing is that we teach them a management system on how to manage these thoughts, how to revisit, how do I know, oh, yeah. there goes the bad voice inside my head, yeah. how to pull it back. Yeah. I'm Michaela, and I'm a 15-year-old playing on a team with 18-year-olds. I didn't believe in myself to do it, and I got a lot of help from the academy in order to believe in myself. It's those mental push-ups that have to be done. Exactly. It's just like running bases. My daughter and I um, were in a tragic accident where we unfortunately lost my husband, her father. When we found Ashley, the mental, hey, you got it, you're strong, you can do this, really came out in the test. I'm just so proud of her. She's definitely one of my heroes. I was in a coma for 11 days. Um, 
During that coma, my dad had passed away. I had broke my femur, pelvis, and the tip of my jaw right here. About eight weeks after that, I was back playing softball, so, yeah. It makes me feel more connected to, like, my dad, just because I grew up with him with it. It lets me challenge myself enough to where I don't break myself down, but I also don't have to rely on others. I am strong. It's definitely my favorite. Donations and contributions to the Colorado Softball Academy Foundation will go to support the Girls With Game program. It's gonna help us cover the cost of any clinical health support that our female athletes need. We are so thankful of the generous support we've already received, whether it's time, talent, or treasure, the support from our community. We're really gonna change the narrative to where play like a girl is a badge of honor. Thank you. One of the coolest things about this is that young lady, Tess, who was in the car accident, just uh, accepted an offer to continue her education and softball career at Oklahoma Christian University. So that's pretty cool. So, so following this experience, I, I reached out to the local instructors, uh, who are also friends and colleagues of mine in the area, and I said, ladies, we have to do more. We've got to come together to do more. We opened the doors of Colorado Softball Academy, the facility, on August 6, 2022. And as a result, in a little over a year, we have 19 teams, nine from 6U, 8U to 10U, and 10 from the 10U to 18U competitive range. The foundation has been able to provide $50,000 in free mental health counseling to our student athletes who need it. We've been able to provide over 70,000 in scholarship opportunities, so financials are not a barrier to play. This is great progress, but we're not done yet. I hope all of you can walk away from this session understanding that sport is a vehicle, it's a platform, and it is more than a game. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Kellen Tate. Thank you, Ashley. It, it is an absolute honor to, to have this platform and share the passion alongside Ashley. Uh, what an incredible and impactful story. Thank you for sharing. Uh, my story in athletics can't start without talking about my family and where I came from. And I was just fortunate to have a mom who was a dance major, loved movement, modern dance, mind you. Have you ever, does anybody know what modern dance? Yes. Very abstract, <laughs> mixed with a father who played collegiate football. So naturally, a ball was in my hand. Despite this, despite all of this, I still ran into, at a young age, gender stereotypes. They still existed at the time when I was extremely impactful and trying to figure out where I belonged. I was 10 years old coming off of my first softball experience, ready and pumped for my first glove, or what I thought would be my first glove. It's my birthday. I save a particular present off to the side, knowing that's the money. That right there looks, you shake it, feels, that's got leather in it. Well, as it, as, as it comes, I wait, I wait, and that last present, I open frantically, and I see pink. And I'm like, okay, I, I don't enjoy pink. That's just not who I am. I lift it up, and it's a tutu. Now, there is home video of this story. You can imagine, right? Tears. I understand I look very happy in that photo, <laughs> but I was also the youngest sibling, and you can imagine my, my older brother and sister, Kellen put the tutu on, and I was a people pleaser, so that's why you see that smile, but inside and home video later, just bawling. I did not get my glove. All I wanted was my glove. That was difficult for me, and it stuck with me and it sticks with these young girls, and it's okay, right, to meet them where they are. We talk about asking questions, 
understanding what's important to them. Fast forward, my youth experience, I was coached by incredible, strong, passionate, courageous women. This propelled me, this experience propelled me to choose a life of advocacy for women in sport. They were the first to educate me on what Title IX was. I don't know the importance of passing, sharing that knowledge. I don't know if this next generation knows. I ask often, it's important for us to continue to educate these young girls on what they can look forward to and the access to participation exists for them. Through their stories, I learned the opportunities we were given were not always the case. Sometimes it was used to, get a, to catch a breath. That's my coach, Hutch. One of the first, uh, she, fought, she fought and won one of the first Title IX cases as a student athlete at Michigan State. When we were running, <laughs> I'd oftentimes say, Hutch, tell me another story, partially to get a break, partially to learn and understand the struggles and teaching, oh my goodness, it is now my time, our time to carry the torch and keep what she started going. It's been a lifetime dedication. EO1 now provides me the space to do just that. What we do, we provide girls eight to 18 the opportunity to be mentored by a female-led staff. Boy, did my life come full circle. Not only can I impact eight to 18, but I can keep women coaching women. And again, I've had amazing male coaches, but there is something unique about looking at a woman leader and learning from them as much as they understand what it looks, what it feels like to you as a young girl. Our instructors at EO1 Softball are as passionate as me. They know it is our turn to now educate, teach all the life skills we talked about, we've spoken about, teamwork. What does that mean, right? How do we do that? How do, we, how do we do that well, especially when things aren't going well? Communication, right? When things go wrong, which we know they will, how do I have the courage to have the conversation with my teammate face to face instead of behind their back? Adaptability. The game of softball, the game of baseball, the ge plenty of sports are games based on failure. How do we adapt? How do we overcome? And resilience, same, right? Struggles, 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 life skills. You've heard them so far throughout the course of the day. How important, what an honor the, that sports has as a vehicle to, to grow people up. That's really what we're about doing. Now let's take a look at the numbers and see the impact of EO1 softball on softball. In the four short years that I've been at EO1, we have increased the number of softball teams and players 400%. Huge. Thank you. <laughs> we have added 14 facilities with dedicated space for softball programming. That's a 300% increase. We have a facility, the Alliance Performance Center, dedicated to softball, a, a space, a safe space 
right? Dedicated, where they come in and they feel heard and seen. We have landed a softball tournament brand, EO1 Softball Tournaments, dedicated, again, a team of people dedicated to helping make sure that those players' experience in, that turn in those tournaments is a positive one. And we have 85, 85 female instructors teaching the next generation. <laughs> Now let's talk about the leaders in the company. 35% of our corporate su support staff is female. Huge, 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 huge. It's so, I feel as if my life has come full circle. I graduated, I understood athletics, what, I understood the value. I was taught by the trailblazers of, the, of, of women in sport. I then shifted to college where I focused on the 18 to 21 and now I've got it all and I've got the support to do it. Even though we still have work to do, I am unbelievably proud of what we have accomplished so that every little girl, whether she wants a glove or a tutu or both can follow her dream. Thank you very much. Now, who made this happen? It is a pleasure to introduce our fearless leader and CEO, Griff Long. It's 2012. I'm at my first national championships for triathlon in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If I can finish in the top 15, I qualify for Team USA and go to represent them in France, I think it was at the time. I've spent years preparing for this, doing two-a-days, doing three-a-days, all the stuff that all the runners do, all the swimmers do, all the bikers do. I have that goal, just finish in the top 15. So, I'm ready. It's race day, the gun goes off, I swim, I bike, I run. I cross the finish line. I'm redlining for over two hours. I puke my guts out, and then I crawl to the leaderboard. And there it is. Oops. I failed. I was crushed. I blamed my coaches. I blamed anybody I could find. I blamed the race director. And for just a minute, I was like, I'm done with this. But like all the athletes in this room, I knew it wasn't going to define me. It took me 15 seconds to get over it and say I'm going to do it better and better this time. It's the competitor in all of us. So fast forward a year later. I'm at it again. Same venue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Olympic distance age group, national championships, to punch a ticket to the world championships. Goal is the same, top 15. Training plans on point. I've added nutrition. I've added mental performance coaches. I have spent 